All right, I think we're live. Uh, good day, boxing fans. Pao Sulud on the mic once again. Welcome to our Podcast Sports Podcast live edition. Huh? Uh, today's special because we'll be speaking with someone who will work with a lot of champions, boxing champions, but not only boxing, okay? So, Philippines, uh, mabuhay po kayo. At uh, I'm sure we're probably going to get some uh, watch time as well from international boxing fans and maybe uh, Mexican. So, Viva Mexico all together now. Are you ready? Yeah, here comes the Boom Boom Pal. Since we'll be talking about uh, strength and conditioning, I just wanted to make sure I show our, our 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 guest that I am very well conditioned and energetic for this interview. And uh, of course, uh, to all my followers out there and uh, to all boxing fans, please show your also condition by commenting and letting us letting us know what you think. Uh, okay. So in the Philippines, we know uh, Memo Heredia as, as someone who have worked with Juan Manuel Marquez. I'm sure you guys still remember the knockout, and uh, as much as we want to forget it, it will be there for a long, long time. Uh, anyway, uh, this guy is now working with John Real Casimero, and without further ado, let me introduce uh, on the phone right now uh, is the very popular uh, Angel Memo Heredia Hernandez. Let me uh, uh, put him on stream. Okay, uh, welcome know, to the show. Thank you, man. Thanks for inviting me over to your show, man. Thank you. Uh, how, how should I call you? Memo? Angel? Well, you know, you can call me Memo. You know, it's, it's funny that, you know, my parents named me Angel when I was born, but they never called me Angel ever. They always called me Memo. <laughs> so it's very easy for me just to be known as Memo, you know. Can you share a little bit? What was that? What was it? Memo. It's too far from the well, angel. Well, Memo, Memo is a, is a second name. It's a short name. It's, it's, it's kind of like a short nickname for Guillermo. So ah. instead of saying the whole Guillermo, you just go ahead and say Memo. Because, you know, in Mexico, we have uh, two two names. And then we have the parents, uh, your, par uh, your father's last name and your mom's last name. So, you know, my full name is Angel Guillermo Heredia Hernandez, you know? And in the U.S., kind of like they chop it off here and then, and in some countries they don't utilize the whole names. But you know, my name is very long. So. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, well, I appreciate the opportunity, and uh, we're very looking forward to asking you uh, a lot of questions. Especially, I want to start off with this one, and uh, I hope you forget me because uh, this will be relevant to everyone here. We love boxing here. We love Manny Pacquiao, and we remember you as one of the person responsible for one Manuel Marquez that knockout eight years ago. It's it's still fresh from you know for some Filipinos. Marquez was thirty nine. Uh, with that power, did, did you ever think or thought that it would end in, in that fashion? Well, you know, after after the third fight, when when he went to decision, you know, we were we were not that happy with that decision. So, Marcus and Nacho and my father were sat down uh, after Marcus had signed the fourth fight, and we discussed, uh, you know, the strategy for the. Okay. Hello. One of the things he um, he requested was he wanted to get more punching power, get more strength, and you know, so I set up a program for him. You know, we did a uh, almost a 16-week camp, very long camp, but it was a uh, it was a camp that not only he was gonna be able, you know, be able to maintain his. Uh... Okay. So it, it, it was. Ring. So basically, it it was about increasing punching power most of the time. You know, we did more weight training, we did a lot of the things that this was the second camp with him. So you know, compared from the first camp, he was more uh, advanced student. So I was able to put in more exercises, more demanding exercises. So you know, it was a very tough camp, and obviously, uh, I remember having a conversation with Marcus. Uh, when we were landing uh, in Las Vegas, we were in the plane, and Marcus told me, so what do you think, Memo? I said, listen, man, I told him, once you put a good punch on Pacquiao, he's going to feel it. He's going to go down. Because, you know, I, I once I developed the program, I was able to see how much advanced he, he advanced from one year to another. So, you know, I knew he was very strong. You know, he had a lot of good sparring sessions, and he was 
knocking people out in the sparring session. So, so yeah, for me, it was not a surprise. I mean, for a lot of people, maybe it was, but for me, it wasn't because we trained for that. You know, also, Marcus had the, uh, he knows or he knew Pacquiao very well in the ring. You know, every gesture that Pacquiao did, every move, any, any feint that Pacquiao did, Marcus was able to know it and was able to act. So, putting all, putting all together, a good training camp, power, plus, of course, the, uh, the ring IQ, he was able to perform, you know. So, so I mean, I was in shock, you know. I was a little bit shocked how he ended on the sixth round, you know, how solid that was and how Pacquiao was, uh, was, uh, was inactive for almost a minute. There I was shocked a little bit. I was worried. But thank God, you know, nothing happened and he was able to get up and he was able to come back and he's still fighting today. All right. Well, that, that was really a, a memorable fight for, for everyone, not just for Filipino. Uh, after the, the, the punch that uh, knocked out uh, Pacquiao, where, where were you and what was your initial reaction uh, when it happened? Well, you know, I was in the uh, in the arena. I normally, if, if anybody knows me, I never, I don't like to get in the corner. I don't like to be in the corner in the fights. Normally, I'm in the locker room, and then I, I get my ticket to go sit down on the uh, on the stands. And, you know, I get very nervous, and and you know, I was sitting down there with uh, with myself. Oh, no, actually, I was with my father, and we were. Uh, you know, we were in the floor, in the floor section, and you know, we pretty much uh, saw everything. You know, it was a very good fight. It was a very emotional fight, you know, for the fans and for everybody. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, Marcus won the fight. Marcus did a good job, but Pacquiao was also doing a great job. You know, he was he was very strong in the fight because uh, how do I know? Because I asked Marcus about it, and he told me he felt it very strong. He felt that he was in very good shape. So, obviously, he was, he was going to come down to the fact that either Manny will get dropped or knocked down or Marcus will get dropped or knocked down, you know? So, that's what the uh, that's what I, my understanding was. You know, Pacquiao, at the beginning of the ring, the first round, he was in good shape. He was throwing a lot. He was moving a lot. And Marcus was just waiting. He got him hurt the fifth round, and you know, then you know the rest. Six round came back. He recovered, and well, that happened in the you know on the sixth round. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm just having uh, some uh, audio feedback here. From I apologize about that, but uh, um, so um, after that uh, fight, uh, of course the. Uh, what was the celebration like? Uh, can you tell us more about the, the reaction in, in, in Mexico? Uh, because, you know, Marquez has been trying uh, for, this is the fourth time. What was the celebration like? Well, you know, after the fight, I, I was with my, uh, with my son and my, my mm -hmm. wife. So I didn't, you know, I don't live in Mexico. I live in the U.S. So I left to, uh, I stayed at a couple of days and then I went back to Puerto Rico where I used to live. And pretty much I celebrated with them, with my wife and my son. You know, uh -huh. I went through a lot of sacrifices, me being away in Mexico City for so many, so many months. And it was, it was very emotional for me because, you know, for me it was one of the, one of my biggest goals. I mean, as a professional, you know, Manny Pacquiao, I, it's, before I even got into boxing, he was one of my idols. You know, I always liked Manny Pacquiao a lot. You know, mm -hmm. but then, then when I got hired with Marcus, I saw money as a challenge for my for my career, as a challenge on, on that, because I saw Marcus the first and the second fight, how close they were, and I thought, mm -hmm. you know, at the moment, that Marcus, he was a good fighter, but there was something lacking in him that he needed to beat Pacquiao, and that was more science, there was more physical conditioning with the with the usage of science, you know, mm -hmm. and. And for me, it became, it became a, a challenge because pretty much I revolutionized the conditioning in boxing after that. You know, so I was very happy. I was very emotional with my family. And, and at the same time, well, you know, I'm, Marcus I called me, invited me over to go with him and the president of Mexico, but I wasn't mm -hmm. able to go. 
And uh, so it was, it was Mexico was celebrating pretty big. You know, Mexicans, just like Filipinos, they love boxing, you know, and, and those fights with Manny Pacquiao would always be remembered. Memorial fights, always going to be remembered, you know, all the time. So people really was pretty excited. You know, it was pretty excited. They were happy about it. And, and, and you know, I, like I said, I went home. <laughs> I celebrated. I got on a cruise ship, and I went vacation uh -huh. for 14 days. <laughs> you know. Oh, nice! Very well deserved vacation, <laughs> especially after. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, I know uh, Manny has fought a lot of Mexicans, and uh, it was Marquez who 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 won in in emphatic fashion. Uh, I'm sure it's a big big celebration for 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 Mexican uh, uh, boxing fans. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely was. It was. It was. It was. Uh, People were shocked. They were very happy about the whole thing. And I mean, you know, being the fact that Manny Pacquiao beat Marcus, you know, first, second, five, the third controversial. So people wanted to see a little bit, they mm -hmm. call it a little bit of justice themselves. Uh -huh. and, and they got to see that. But, you know, frankly, people tell me, and, and, and you don't take it personal. And I said, no, I don't take nothing personal because I'm not the one fighting. Marcus is fighting. Pacquiao is fighting. We just do our work, you know. We just do our work, and and I never get involved emotionally with with this rivalry. Obviously, as you know, I work with so many boxers from different nations, you know, Filipinos, Mexicans, Americans, Canadians, Russians. I mean, you name it. You know, at yeah, the end yeah. of the day, this is like this is the work that we do. So we work for our clients, you know. Obviously, you know, okay. for me that victory was special. It was special because you know it meant a lot for me, and you know. So it's gonna be, you know, it's a great memory, you know. Uh, yeah, it it was indeed a a great memory. I, I'm sure you've seen the memes, and, and the cake. Uh, you know <laughs> that cake. I don't know when was that birthday with with uh, one Manuel Marquez and then Pacquiao lying down. Have you have you seen that? Oh, no. I I think I, man, there people were just putting a lot of memes. I think they were just some of them were out of line, you know, because at the end of the day, hey. You know, Senator Pacquiao got knocked down, but, you know, he did a hell of a fight. I mean, you know, he was there and he was winning the fifth round. So, so you know, there's always, unfortunately, in boxing, there's always the fans that go out of line sometimes. And I think I think it's yeah. okay to celebrate, but it, it, it went a little bit above, you know, the celebration yeah. with this crazy memes. Yeah, for, for, for a while, Mexicans and Filipinos were going at it, but uh, we were losing that battle on, on the... Uh, on social media because of those a lot of memes and a lot of <laughs> and that cake uh i gotta <laughs> ask you as well <laughs> before before right. before we go to some of the questions um uh the the drinking the uh the drinking of pee was that your idea whose idea was it no, because no. That, that was somebody else's when i when i came into camp the first okay. thing i told him you have to stop that you know so i told him he had to stop that and i asked him who who told him to do that? And he said, well, it was a doctor. And I said, who? Well, what kind of doctor? And at the end of the day, he was a herbologist or somebody, a friend of his, told him to go see this guy, and this guy told him to drink his urine. And <laughs> frankly, you know, I was I was very, you know, that was one of the things that really shocked me, I said, at this time of year. And I and I, explained, and I, and I talked to him and I asked him, why is it that, you, you know, why are you drinking the urine? Why they told you? What are the benefits of it? And he said, well, you know, they told me that if I drink my urine, then I, you know, if I didn't absorb the nutrients, I can reabsorb them again. And I told him, okay. yes, perhaps yes, but you can reabsorb a lot of toxins as well. That's what today we have supplementation. We don't need to do that. We do supplementation, we do blood work, we analyze what, what you're missing, what minerals you're missing, what vitamins you need, you know, what amino acids you, you lack enough. And then that's what you design, you know, a profile, a good supplementation program. And and that's how Marcus has started, you know, at the beginning, you know, before I got it, I got involved with him, he was only taking vitamin B12s, you know, he wasn't really taking a whole program of, of supplementation, you know, he wasn't lifting weights, he wasn't doing a lot of things that he was, you know, he was the kind of guy that would run every day and do a lot of uh, training in the gym. But, you know, when I came in, I changed that. You know, I had, the first thing I did, got rid of that urine drinking thing. And, you know, we started <laughs> okay. doing, you know, we started doing all the kind of programs, the sprinting, 
uh, <laughs> weightlifting, and he was very happy about it because you know every every certain period of time he told me, "Man, I'm getting bigger. Look at this," and he was posting in the in, in the mirror. Yeah, it's, just, it's you know you'd be surprised how funny these guys are. You know, Marcus could be a serious looking guy on TV and everything, but he's a very funny guy. You know. And I, I, I got to know a little bit of Manny Pacquiao. He's also very funny, too. You know, so <laughs> you get to see these little things that people don't get to see. You know, they got a little kids in themselves, you know. <laughs> uh, that's a benefit of uh, working closely with, with them. Uh, um, uh, I, I also wanted to know, you, you mentioned uh, weightlifting. Uh, is, yes. Is there so, some misconception about it? Because in the Philippines, uh, so, some of the boxers, I know, uh, they don't lift weights because apparently it's not supposed, you know, when you're not supposed to do that. But you just said you know, uh, Marquez was waiting is, lift. This uh, is the thing. When mm -hmm. it comes to weightlifting, right, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, everybody automatically. When you talk to a boxing coach, which is an old mm -hmm. school, and then mm -hmm. you mention weightlifting, they, op they, they will open their eyes like, what? Don't touch the weights. See the problem is a lot of a lot of strength conditioners or even a lot of boxing coaches that they do the training camps for their for their guys. You know, in the past there's a the few guys that would do weights, but uh -huh. they would do them wrongly. They would do they would do they would lift weights kind of like a bodybuilding type. So when uh -huh. it comes to bodybuilding type, you become stronger, yes, but you become bigger. So now you have a problem, you see. It kind of uh, it kind of interferes with the biomechanics of boxing. But when you work properly, when you develop a proper plan, where everything is based on how many reps you do, what percentages of you of your of your net strength do you use, then then you will get the benefits that you're looking for. You know the muscles. You got the fast twitch muscle, then you got the uh, I call it the red muscle, which is the you know the, the aerobically one, the ones that keep you know the oxygen that keeps you. That keeps you aerobically so you can run and the fast twitch is the one that gives you your quick short you know short periods of burst of speed explosiveness so you have to know what kind of training you're going to utilize on a guy for example the best way to do it is you can get an you can get exa an example uh example for example uh what you call uh what you can i don't do it but it's a lot of people mm -hmm. that do that a lot. And they'll pull out a sample of your muscle tissue, and then they'll de they can determine of, of certain fibers. Did you know, you know the which muscle. Okay, you're kind of breaking up there, but yeah, go ahead. Exercises that that you do with a boxer that's going to develop power and explosiveness without increasing size. But this is, this is, this is the part where a lot of people got to understand that that's what we go to college for. That's what we get mm -hmm. education for, to be able to understand these, to, to become, you know, to, to become an expert on this. You can't just, you know, have a guy do not 30 pull-ups. I mean, at the end of the days, I seen a lot of boxers that they, they have lifted weights incorrectly and what happens is they become slower they become uh, robotic you see mm. they, they, they get tired very quick so you know there's a big science behind this so that's why okay. when I told you at the beginning of the show that I revolutionized boxing that was because I was the first one and and at least in Mexico and, and some parts of the world that I started utilizing weight training as a as a base for my boxers I don't know if you wow, know, wow. but a lot of my boxers, they have a high rating of, of KO in people, you know, good uh, KO percentage. So if you know what you're doing, you definitely will, will hit the spot. If you don't know what you're doing, then you're going to have problems. That's why a lot of coaches have that issue about some boxers lifting weights because, you know, mm -hmm. basically they, they're working on a fighter. They're trying to develop his uh, skills, his ability, his speed, his timing, and then they're afraid of letting that boxer and maybe it goes into the wrong hands and obviously it'll break their work completely you know because they don't mess up the whole training camp so so yes i understand in mexico we had the same issue too even at the beginning you know my adapting pretty good in the weight training 
and Nacho, you know, Nacho Bernstein always, you know, he always allowed me to work. He never feared in anything. He just told me, as long as you don't mess up with his speed and you increase more explosiveness, then I'm happy. You know, so he he never interfered. And, you know, I, I, I work with so many coaches and they, 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 you know, they let me work pretty good, 100% with the boxes and, and I, I get to do my program correctly, you know. Oh, nice. Like I said, yeah, there's a big there's a big difference about lifting right correctly or lifting the wrong the wrong way. Obviously, the wrong way is going to give you a lot of problems when when it comes to boxing. There you go. Uh I I, sh- I think I should be paying you for all of these uh, pointers. Thank you very much. Uh we're, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. All right. No, my pleasure, man. Yeah. How, how long does a, a usual training camp uh do you think should should be? Uh, that including you know, strength and conditioning. For example, when uh, there's some boxes in particular, they want to increase power, but they also want to maintain speed and explosiveness, and they want to maintain endurance, is endurance. Then you mm-hmm. have to, if you're given the choice to, for example, if you're a top five in the world, and you're given the choice to, to pick up your dating fight, I mean, you, your fight dating, I mean, you, you, yeah, your fight date, I would, I would, I would advise them to do a 12 week training of 14, which may the first four weeks will be only conditioning, like strength conditioning, no boxing, nothing like that. And obviously, then, you know, after the four weeks, we have 10 weeks left. Then we start, you know, we start doing, I would advise them to start doing their boxing training. And what I do is uh, normally when I get the date, when I start with a guy and I get the fighting date, I do what is called planification program. I break it into stages based on how many weeks I have. So every every boxer I have, they never train the same, you know? Sometimes, I mean, I, I always pray that I get at least 10 weeks or, you know, even nine weeks, but sometimes uh-huh. I get less, sometimes I get six weeks. So you got to know how to handle it. And there's nothing you can do. Like I cannot go ahead and change the day. I can't do that because you know, they already got a date, everything is settled, and you have to work with what you have. And then you have to develop a program that whatever you're doing is not going to affect their, you know, his qualities. For example, if you have a boxer who's very quick, extremely fast, but you know after the fourth round or fifth round he gets tired, then obviously you want to maintain his speed, but you want to maintain mm-hmm. his endurance. So there's a certain programs that we do that, you know, without affecting Because otherwise, imagine if you, get, if you give the guy a lot of endurance, but you take a lot of speed out, then that's a problem. So you, you have to have a, a ratio, you know. That's why you got to do certain exercises you can develop power sometimes with weight training you can develop power exposing this with other methods medicine balls biometrics i mean so many things isometric i mean so many ways to do it but you have to know exactly how many weeks you have before each camp like i said okay if i if i if i'm given the choice to to pick up date or, or you know they are usually tell me how many weeks do you need memo and i'll tell them well it's a world championship fight I usually want 10 to 12 weeks, you know? If we go 14, fine. But if we go 12, that's okay without, without counting the week of the fight. That way I can be able to work on a good, on a good base. For example, four, four weeks of, of good conditioning strength training, you know, which sometimes it starts off with a lot of endurance weight lifting, which is a lot of uh, uh, weight lifting, but a lot of repetitions with a small percentages. And then we go into the strength phase and so forth, and then the speed, and then the competition. I mean, you have to know how to break it down. One little mistake on the planification, it could have you, it could have your boxing in trouble because you you never want your boxer to peak too early. You want him to peak right on the five week, so it has to be very precisely, you know. So, like I said, sometimes I get good weeks, sometimes I get less weeks, and 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 we and and that's when you have to know what to do then you know in order to maintain you guys in good condition all right well i'm, I'm having an uh, eye opening here and uh, totally uh having a different perspective now of what you do i thought it was just giving the, the right diet but you know you, you no, like what and, you and said also, you're, you're doing also, you're doing a lot of different things <laughs> i know I and mean, listen and it's not only the weight training the condition you have to also know the nutrition part sometimes some boxers, they have their chef, and I respect that, and I let them do their job. I don't get involved. I only get involved in the supplementation. And how do you, you know, how do I, how, how am I successful in that? Well, it's very simple. You know, you have to, if you look at a person physically from the outside, 
he might look mm-hmm. to you that he's healthy, but maybe he's not. The only way to really determine what what he needs or what vitamins is lacking of is to do blood work. Once you get the blood work done, then you be able you have an idea what this individual is having issues. You know, sometimes they have low hemoglobin, sometimes they have low iron, sometimes they have low vitamin D, and that's when you start developing you know supplementation program based on that because an athlete not only it's important to push him during training. You also have to help him to recover. Recovery is the most important thing when it comes to conditioning. Because what's the point of training a guy very hard on Monday and then having him three days later try to recover? No, you already wasted three days of a short period of time that we have for the fight. So, you know, you want to make sure that you recover him at least on a daily night basis, you know. You know, make sure that you recover him through maintaining low acid lactic levels, you know, increase buffering systems. I mean, there's so many ways. I mean, you know, I mean, if I explain to you, I'll probably get you, <laughs> i probably get you this. It's a long process. So, you know, yeah. I do a lot of things. And like I said, sometimes, you know, I, 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 I do the, the menus, but then once again, some, some guys already have the chefs and, and I let them do that because, you know, I don't get involved out of respect. And, and they, if they ask me if it's okay, I said, no problem, man. That's better for me. I don't, you know, they, they kind of, I can relax a little bit, you know? <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'm getting a lot of information here. Thank you very much. Uh, this is looking like a, a seminar for, for hours. Uh, you know, maybe there's boxers and uh, coaches, trainers yeah. watching this. Uh, they're learning a lot from you. <laughs> no problem. I wanna, no problem. I, I wanna uh, 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 go back a little bit because I, I need to ask you. This is one of the uh, a few number of questions that I, I need to ask you uh, from the fans here in the Philippines. Um, as a, as a Mexican, Juan Manuel Marquez is of course a legend. Uh, him, Eric Morales, Barrera. Uh, these are the Filipino uh, boxers that you know that have been ingrained in, in us because he fought. They fought uh, Manny Pacquiao. There are some arguments. Who is the better or the best of the three? I just wanted to ask, what do you think? Well, you know, I, you know, I, those <laughs> all those boxers are great boxers. They make great Mexican legends. You know, they everyone has his own unique way to. To see things, you know, I, I personally, obviously, because at the time I interacted with Juan Manuel Marquez, I, I, and what I seen him, you know, fighting Manny Pacquiao, who was the best shape ever, and and Manny, you know, Manny has been a tremendous fighter since he was a 108 pounder all the way to 147, and Morales, it, it, it's you know, it's hard to. To try to compare him because sorry to put you on the spot, okay? <laughs> be, because no, 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 because a lot of a lot of people. Right now, especially in Mexico, they're wondering right now what would have happened if Marquez would have fought uh, would have fought uh, Morales. But that fight never happened. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So there's a big issue about it because you know I asked Marquez, you know, when I remember I asked him one time when we were in Mexico City, I said, "Why you you never fought uh, uh, Morales?" He said, "He said, well, he never gave me a chance. I asked him plenty of times, he never gave me the opportunity." You know, and it's uh-huh. and that's what he told me. So right now it seems like they want to do an exhibition match, but I really, you know, frankly, I like I like him three. I mean, uh, yeah. Barrera is a great boxer he's from Mexico City. You know, the very technician Morales also very technician. I know he won the first fight with Manny, then he lost two, and then you got Marcus who did four fights, and and those four fights were, were tremendous. You know, and I mean they were. I mean, you name it. They were on fire from you know from round one to twelve. Very, very good fight. So I'm gonna go ahead and say Marcus as an opinion, <laughs> without offending those other big legends out there. <laughs> you know. Okay. All right. Well, you know, in fairness, those three boxers are are really uh, the great boxers here. We remember uh, those three very well. And uh, you know, in the Philippines, when there's a Filipino up and comer boxer. We always say mm-hmm. uh, get him to uh, fight a Mexican because we believe that Mexican fight will be a, a good fight and a, a level of fight. So yes, no, that's, that's how we reason. respect it. Filipinos yeah. are very good. I, you know, I, even before I ever worked with any Filipino, every time I would come into the fight, I mean, look at Nonito Donaire, you know, great fighter. Mm. I mean, you, you got so many of them and, and they warriors, you know, they come in here. They sometimes they they are known here in America and they come and do hell of a fights. I mean, you know, I remember and I asked Nacho, I said, Nacho, what happened to the first fight with Marcus? Why is it that you got um that uh Marcus uh, got knocked down three times? I said, Well, he said we didn't know anything about money. 
we <laughs> took him. We, we, we didn't know much about him, and, and we thought he was easier opponent. And even Marcus said it, man, after those three knockdowns, I said, he finally woke up. But, uh, you know, the, back then, you know, there's so many <laughs> Filipino boxers. They're, they're, they're out there. They just, they just haven't been discovered yet. But once they are, oh. trust me, they'll be out there. All right. Well, well, thank you very much as well for that. Uh, how about uh, uh, Pacquiao doesn't have an opponent? Do you think uh, another fight with Marquez would happen? Well, you know, <laughs> a lot of people want to see that. I, I want to see that myself too. But I really think at this point, you know, Marquez might... If he said no before, I think he might not say no now. He's already 46 years old. So, I mean, you know, he's working out. He's always likes to work out. Right now, he's lifting weights now, but not my weights. He's doing bodybuilding type of weightlifting. That's why he looks kind of pumped wow. in his latest pictures. He came out on the news recently. But, you know, it, it, it would have been nice to have the fifth, the fifth fight, you know. You know, uh, I mean, it, who doesn't? I mean, people always say, Oh, you know, they're already old. Why we want to see another fight? And I always tell him, yeah, all you do is complain, but you'll be the first one buying per view. Simple as that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, uh, so, uh, of course, uh, we're still uh, talking about Pacquiao. How, how about, uh, there's also a rumor about uh, Pacquiao versus uh, Gennady Golovkin. What's your comments on, on that one? Well, I, I think, Maybe the speed, yeah, the hand speed of Manny Pacquiao and the ability, I mean, the endurance he has, he can definitely overcome uh, Golovkin's power. I mean, last, last fight I saw Golovkin, he didn't, look, he didn't do, you know, he didn't look that good. But I think, uh, I think some mistake because Golovkin is heavy already. I mean, he's, he might be 160 on the scale, but on the next day he might be 190, 185. Oh. And wow. Manny Pacquiao, yeah, Manny Pacquiao, we know that he goes 147, and that's eating before the waiting. You know what I mean? So he doesn't <laughs> go more than that. So I think it'll be a disadvantage for him. You know, I mean, maybe his speed, his ability, you know, he will be able to avoid any of those power punches from Golovkin. But, you know, what if he gets caught? You know what I mean? That would be yeah, a problem yeah. because that disadvantage of weight, trust me, that really carries on. That really puts a lot of struggle on a fighter on ringside when you have a fighter who's bigger than you and you keep hitting him and and all you do is you don't do no damage at all like nothing uh, it, uh -huh. it frustrates the fighter you know it frustrates the fighter and pretty much they give up mentally you know mm. so it's so uh, i would say he should not take the risk in my opinion he don't need to uh, you know okay all right unless, you unless, and i have unless, the same unless he unless he wants to do the challenge because my Pacquiao likes challenges we never know but i just <laughs> hope it's only it was only uh an article that came out, and, but I, I I wouldn't recommend it to me. I think a lot of people don't like the fight either. I don't think Sean Gibbons, his advisor, like the fight either too. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> Freddie Roach, Freddie Roach mentioned it, but then said that he doesn't like the fight. I don't like the fight personally, but of course, you know, a lot of Filipinos we think of Manny Pacquiao as a, a superhero, uh, and uh, you know, we believe he can win. I believe he can win, but it's just too risky as well for me. So, uh, yeah, you know, no, I just he, wanted he to get your point of view. He can definitely win on points, no doubt. But if you look at his last fight uh, with Terman, he got hit yeah. a lot, you know. So yes, if he if he was going to fight Triple G, he would have to be more defensive, be aggressive, but be more defensive. That way he okay. won't go through what he went through. Even though you know he dominated Kit Terman, the whole fight was an amazing fight, you know, he did pretty good. But that's just to okay. give an idea that what yes. would happen, you know. Uh, so who do you think he should fight? The the most possible and uh, ideal fight uh, you think? I think I think Mickey Garcia would be good for him because oh. you know not only is a it's a great per view event, it's a lot of money involved, but also you know it's a Mexican uh, Mexican Filipino rivalry, yeah. so it'll be great. You know I think the style fits him great for money, even though Mickey Garcia keeps talking about that his style could give him trouble like Marcus, but they two different two different styles, Marcus and <laughs> and, and, and Mickey. Mickey is good good fighter, don't get me wrong. He has a good he's a very good technician. But the problem is you saw what happened with uh, Errol Spence. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he wasn't able to manage the speed. And you know that uh, so I would say this this is the same thing that would happen. Many Pacquiao's is too fast. People always talk about 
you know, I want to find money back here. But frankly, I mean, once they, and I spoke to guys who fought it before, like for example, Brandon Rios. I mm -hmm. remember I was going to train him for the fight, but I couldn't. I was with Marcus. Uh, he was preparing for Bradley fight. And after the, after a while, I asked him, so how do you, how do you how do you feel, you know, fighting uh, money? He said, man, that was crazy. He said he was too fast. He was one here. You look at him, he was on the other side, and he was an endless game. I said, there you go. So, you know, I mean, people want to fight him, but when, you, when you're when in the ring with him, that's another story. Very, very difficult story. If you don't adapt well, forget about it. Manny Pacquiao will eat you out, in and out. Boop, 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 all night long. But Garcia said... Garcia said it wasn't uh, the speed; it was the the height. He said it, it's different because the uh, Pacquiao is smaller. Uh, do you believe that that uh, it, well, it will know, be a, a different? Fight? I mean, mm -hmm. Pacquiao could be smaller, but look at his legs. Look at his neck. Pacquiao stronger yeah. than the legs. He's very strong. Yeah. And that left hand is powerful. Now, Mickey Garcia has a good chin. Don't get me wrong, but you know he's uh -huh. he showed it many times. He, you know he can take some punches, but you know. I mean, every punching comes. I mean, every punching is different from person to person. Sometimes yeah. the angles, sometimes the speed, or sometimes the momentum. And you know that way you look at a packet is when it comes in on you and throws a left at you. I mean, it's so fast you don't see it. Once it hits you, <laughs> trust me, you know, it could it could blind you off a little bit, or it could get you discouraged to continue the fight. You know, I mean, <laughs> when he fought uh, when he fought Jesse Vargas. I mean, Jesse Vargas is a decent fighter and everything, but, you know, Pacquiao was mm -hmm. pretty much just dancing with him all night long, you know? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. That's, that's the thing about it. That's, uh, Mickey Garcia, if he fights money, he would have to be very fast. A little, I mean, he would have to increase his explosiveness and obviously his timing and, 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 and study money, Pacquiao. But frankly, I see it. I don't see it difficult, but right now I see money, Pacquiao, in a very good momentum. I see All right. a good momentum for his career, and and I think uh, he's looking forward for big fights. You know, nice, nice for for uh, a man his age. You know, we, we've talked a lot, and you know, first of all, again, I I appreciate the time. About thirty minutes, uh, and we're thirty minutes or more than thirty minutes into the show, and we're you still on the Pacquiao top topic. But uh, I want to ask uh, the viewers to please subscribe and follow us, and also I want to ask you, Memo. Do you have anything uh, uh, maybe to promote first before we continue with the conversation, like your social uh, media or anything you want to say? Yeah, man, you know, just follow me on uh, a Meuro Elite Fitness and Nutrition and, and on my Instagram, which is uh, Angel Memoredia. So you can look you can look at my videos. Sometimes I post some videos once a month of, you know, mm -hmm. so people can have an idea. Because, you know, I get a lot of calls and, and, and messages from friends or or, 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 or people that, you know, they want, they ask me if I do personal training. And that's something I don't do. I don't do personal training, but I do give them sometimes advice. And, then, you know, I help them, try to help them a little bit. So sometimes I, I post exercises for them to have an idea or, or the fans to, to have an idea how do we train our guys, you know, or how boxers really train today. That, you know, wow. today, you know, over the years, boxing training has changed so much that, uh, that you know it's gotten to the point where how can i explain to you it's um <laughs> it's hard for me to explain to you but but people you know the for example mexico they never you know they never thought a boxer would be for example sprinting or swimming you know what i mean uh -huh. or, or for instance uh doing some uh isometric exercises but now you know it, it's there and and then people started to learn now that boxing is is not only about hitting the bag, it's also about conditioning, nutrition, and and it's it's nice, you know. They can have an idea about that. The fans they they love right. it so well, much. Thank you, thank you very much for that for revolutionizing it. You know, boxing is just a complex way now to to train. And uh, again, thank you very much. We we we're learning a lot so far. I want to uh, put it back a little bit again. I, if you work with uh, Casimero and uh, a few other Filipinos. Uh, but have you been here in the Philippines? Never been in the Philippines. You know, I always been invited with, you know, one the first, I worked with Sonsona one fight and then Casimiro. And then uh -huh. I worked with Casimiro again for the uh, fight against Tete. And we always talk about Philippines. They always say, hey, you should come to the Philippines. I say, yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward one of these days or hopefully this year I, I get to see uh, Philippines. You know, people are very nice. They've always been very respectful and 
and it's uh, here is a very good very good country you know very nice ocean views i mean it's it's nice i will definitely look forward to to visit for yeah look looking forward to have you here uh you know in the philippines uh um if if we're talking about international strength and conditioning coach uh you know we always uh uh, have in mind, of course, uh, Alex Ariza before, Justin Burton, just because they work with Manny Pacquiao, they're affiliated yeah. with that. But you uh, also is, uh, you know, is uh, something that comes to mind. You work with Gasimero and uh, Romero Duno. So, you know, you're very popular here uh, among boxing fans. So we're looking forward to have you. I'm sure you're going to, don't be surprised if there's a lot of people that's going to have, you know, photo with you. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. You know, I, 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 you know, there's a lot of, I live in Orlando, Florida. Uh, there's a lot of yeah. friends of mine that are Filipinos, and and you know it's it, they they love boxing. So I always hang out with them. Sometimes when we, you know when I'm not in camp, usually go on the weekends to to watch the fights at uh, these local bars called Buffalo Wild Wings. They have the fights, and you know mm. I, I, you get you'd be surprised how many Filipinos are up there, and they recognize me. Though. And it's it feels it feels great. You know it feels feels great that they they very respect you know respectful. They you know they never they have never been disrespectful in any way they always like you know a good fight with Manny Pacquiao you know very very humble people and I I really look forward to that and and hopefully soon like, I get to get my dream going in the Philippines relax a little yeah bit. yeah Casimiro is watching right now he's asking for a shout out so shout out General Casimiro and I, I saw you, you you're eating some of the cooked food of uh, Casimiro how was it it was good you know he did some <laughs> shrimps you know some spicy <laughs> shrimps <laughs> I you know you'd be surprised in Mexico you know, when I was, you know, I was a former athlete myself, so I used to eat a lot of rice, and I love rice, you know, white rice, steamed rice. I try mm -hmm. to stay away from it because, you know, it makes me kind of, I'm not an athlete anymore. But, uh, you know, Casimiro loves rice, and, and they cook pretty good. You'd be surprised. He cooks some good stuff, very spicy. You know, they use a lot of coconut milk. Very, very different from what we eat in Mexico, even though our uh -huh. food is spicy in Mexico. But it's, uh -huh. it, it, but this kind of the herbs that you guys use is amazing, and I really love it. You know, I really love it. I mean, I've been here for what uh, I think five weeks now in Vegas, and I gained some weight now. You know, now, and I, I gotta say these <laughs> thanks to Casimiro and and of course Nuno who was cooking all this nice food up there in camp. You know. <laughs> okay. You know, it's, it's all amazing. Right. Good food. All right, you, you're already as popular as it is right now, but. Uh, uh... Who are, uh, if you can share some of the high-profile boxers that you work with, we know Juan Manuel Marquez, Casimero, Arce, you work with Andy yeah, Ruiz as well, and well, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, Andy Ruiz, Pule, Pobrat, with Badu Jack, with uh, mm -hmm. with uh, Shumil Beibud, I mean, so many of them, I, I with Sonsona, with, with Casimero, I work with... Um, I mean, frankly, if I if I really sit down, I, I have more than 40, 30 books I work with. Wow. But, you know, wow. I, I, I work with Pascal, Lucian Bute, you know. That's a with, lot. Uh, yeah, with, with a lot of good boxes, you know. And, and today, I'm also working with, um, what's the name? Ugas, uh, right? Yeah, with Ugas Jordanis, with Bartolome Rances, you know. And, 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 and soon, I'll be working with Gambo as well. I mean... It's uh, you know I it's so many boxes if I could recall them you know I a lot of <laughs> very busy right guy now. yeah yeah so but you know right now we're concentrating on on big fights we have uh, thank God we have six big fights big world title fights this year and obviously nice, I'm concentrating nice. on Casimiro who who's still hunting for Inoy but it seems like <laughs> Inoy is still hiding somewhere in Japan so hopefully that fight will be done soon. And then we can bring those three belts to Philippines. You know, I mean, a lot of people. Yeah. It's a, it's a great fight. Hopefully, that a fight is made. So we'll, oh, yeah, we'll, start yeah. camp to, we'll start camp tomorrow. Actually, uh, Casimiro and I will start camp yeah. again and and try to get uh, pick up what we left over. And and now he's working on a date with uh, with his manager with Sean Givens. And hopefully, that date is given is, is given to us soon. And but we've got to start tomorrow. So it's good. You know, okay. keep myself busy, my friend. You know? Right, very in demand. Ah. Uh, I want to ask you, you can answer this or not, uh, but I want I just want to know who do you think is the hardest working athlete so far that you work with? Uh, but I gotta be frank, uh, there's a lot of them, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Rances Bartolome works very good, uh, Casimiro works great, you know. And and and, and uh, the reason I bring Casimiro's name up is because 
it reminds me of Marcus a little bit, not in the style, obviously, but on the way that Casemiro had never trained conditioning like the way I do, and he likes it, you know, and, and he adapts pretty well, and, it, and, and he puts a lot of heart into it, you know, that's something that a lot of boxers don't like to sprint, because mm-hmm. sprinting, it hurts you, you know, it's a lot of lactic acid training, and, and Casemiro does it pretty good, at the beginning, he'll stop a little bit, and but you know he works hard. He works hard, and um, you know. So, I mean, there's a lot of them. For example, uh, Uga Jordanis was good. Uh, Jim Pascal is a, is a warrior. He works very hard. And you know, I also work with Jesse Vargas too. He works great. I mean, every you know every yeah. boxer has his uniqueness way to train. Some of them. I also have boxers who are very lazy. I gotta be frank with you. They everybody. Uh, of, don't mention boxers, them. <laughs> You <laughs> know, a lot of boxers they come to me and said, "I wanna, I wanna, you know, I wanna, I wanna increase punch and power like Marcus." And I said, "Okay, you wanna increase punch and power? Then you got to train like Marcus because you don't even train twenty percent like Marcus, but you want to increase punch and power. How are you gonna do it if you complain the whole week about these, about that? You know, and, and at, you know, at the end of the day, I had to uh, walk away from camps because you can't have, even though you get hired to do work, but if you have a guy who's not pushing himself." He's questioning what you're doing. That's the moment you got to walk away, no matter what. You got to close the door and say goodbye. Thank you very much. Good luck for your fight. It doesn't matter who it is. You got to do that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. at the end of the day, when things don't go right for a fighter mm-hmm. and they look terrible in the fight, I'm not saying technically, but, you know, when they run out of gas or uh-huh. they look tired, you know, they always got somebody to blame themselves so they always blame the conditioning guys so that's why i see something like that i get my red alerts and i said bye bye i cut him off that's <laughs> very simple you can't you can't you know you can't put your effort on a guy who doesn't want to listen you know there and you I go i think a lot of boxers freddie's like that too freddie would not waste his time if you don't if you don't want to train he'll let you go you know there you go that's, just... that's very coming from you yes uh, they should work if they want to be as like one manuel they should train like one yes uh, you know, you have some great client list. Um, but how do people hire you? Do 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 they just reach out to you, or do you have qualification, or you you're not no, qualified to be my so, student? No, no, some, no. I do. You know, it's this is me. I okay. I train. Obviously, I get calls from managers, sometimes from promoters, or sometimes I get mm-hmm. direct messages from the boxers. Uh-huh. And 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 you know, I I work with everybody. You know, even though there's 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 also small boxers who are barely, you know, they're barely starting to come up. They got a good talent, and I and I do work with them, you know. And all the uh-huh. only thing I ask him is, you're gonna start working with me. I'm not easy. We'll train six times a week. You know, it's never hard every day, but you know, I have a system that you know is constantly training from Monday to Saturday. All uh-huh. I want you to give me is your hundred percent, you know. And they, if they do. I'll stay with them, you know, and I don't know necessarily they world champions. I mean, they don't even make much money. Sometimes I do a couple pro bonos a year, which I don't oh. know in boxes. Yeah, I do that. Wow. Because I always thought that I was given a gift. You know, I like to share that as well. And, and if, you know, if you if you ask around people that know me, I, I like mm-hmm. to help a lot, you know. I like to help a lot. And, and like I said, the only thing I ask him is, hey, I'm going to sacrifice myself. I'm going to pull myself. I'm going to give you my time. All I want you is to give me your time, and that's it. And they do, they do, and and there's there's a lot of good bosses out there. You know, they're still six and zero, seven and zero, and they they'll be out there probably in a couple of years. You know, so okay. like I said, I get calls sometimes directly from themselves and or the promoters, or most mostly the managers as well. You know, they the ones they 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 take care of the fighters' uh, uh, management, and they mm-hmm. that's when they you know they move them around. From boxing training to conditioning and, and so forth. Like for example, just recently I got a call from a from a guy from Puerto Rico who's coming in on Tuesday. So I'll start working with him. He has a good fight. I think it's a champ. I think it's a world title fight or a title eliminator. And oh, nice. I'll start uh-huh. on Tuesday. So I got a call from him directly. You know what I mean? And I know nice. him for a while. So it's it's nice. You know, I mean, it's a it, it's a business, but also. It's a human. It's a human part, you know. You gotta be human as well. It's not only about business, you know. When you compete right. somebody, well, you gotta do it right. You know what I mean? To me, to me, you mm-hmm. could be a three world champion or you could be a beginning uh, six and zero. Oh, you're still the same to me. 
No one is better, no one is less. You're my client, I'm working with you, you got my stamp on you, which means you got my name on you. That means you gotta obey, you gotta do what I said, I do my work, you do your work, and we do good, you know? All right. Uh... Uh, speaking of business, and I read this from an uh, independent uh, website. Um, mm -hmm. Is it true you, you earn about, I, I don't want to really bring this up, but it's public anyway. Wow, this is right. good money. Uh, 20000 a year and then 40000 US bo bonus for s victories, significant yes. victories. Wow. Yeah, sometimes sometimes you get, you know, I get good bonuses. And you have to understand in the boxing, <clears throat> there's, uh, there's boxes that make a lot of money. There's boxes that make less money. And and they usually, you know, when there's a world championship fights or two belts on race and they win the fight, you know, they give me bonuses. I I I don't really set up an amount uh, <laughs> the bonuses. Usually the, the the bonus comes from themselves, you know, sometimes from the managers and, and sometimes like I, I do advise other, you know, actors as well, Hollywood actors, that's when I get bonuses as well. And that's what really most of the money is. Hollywood. You know? so, oh. so, so, so boxing, yeah, I get bonuses as well. You know, with Marcus, I got bonuses with uh, the top rank. I mean, you know, and, and sometimes I do. And like I said, most of the time we set up a, a, a salary or a percentage or or a fee. And, and then sometimes the athlete, if, you know, if he, he was very happy because he was able to accomplish what he wanted, then, you know, sometimes they give you a bonus and everything is well taken, you know. All right. Uh, all right. Um, I, I want to uh, have uh, some. Uh, this is some se serious conversation right now. I just wanted to ask uh, you. No, I, I'm very happy that people are looking up to you now, but it, it isn't always like that uh, throughout your career. You know, many is aware yeah. that isn't, you know, before in the past, there's a lot of controversies. Uh, can, can you share a little bit more about uh, that journey and how you've been able to, you know, pick yourself up from, you know, from those things well you know you know i've been after that uh, the situation in my life i was able to to help the sports a lot you know i was able to <clears throat> to help the u.s government the uh testing organizations to to help them and walk them through uh to, to better drug test detection you know at the time there was a lot of a lot of drugs there was a lot of pets that were not they were so difficult to detect they, and sometimes they were even and they didn't have no idea they were using them so mm -hmm. you know, i was able to help a lot because of that and because of so much i done for the you know for the organizations over the years I, I feel pretty happy because you know even though testing is always going to be a challenge you know mm -hmm. because it's never 100 percent proof but it's gotten better you know, and, and the reason why I say this is because when it comes to boxing, it's not the same as, uh, you know, it's not the same as doing a sprint or mm -hmm. doing a bicycle ride than having two guys almost kill each other in the ring. So, you know, pets in boxing is very dangerous, you know. So obviously at the beginning, a lot of media didn't know much about my crown because, you know, when I came into boxing as a new person, you know, obviously, mm -hmm. some newspapers love the negative, you know, part of, uh, of the news to sell more papers. Mm -hmm. So they started, you know, bragging about the past, the past, but they forgot to mention that because of me, drug testing in the United States and worldwide has evolutionized. Because of me, there's a lot of drugs that are detectable now. Because of me, there's a lot of methods that are usable today to detect drugs that were undetectable then. You see what I mean? They forget the part. They forget the part that I that I done so much for the U.S. government, for the U.S. Congress, for many other countries in the world. So you know, when I got it into uh, into boxing, you know, everything was uh, it was a brand new start for me. And obviously, you know, I started doing some great results with RC, you know, becoming a world champion, then Marcus. So you know, those are. Great boxes, Mexican great boxes. So obviously, there's always gonna be certain media. They are always gonna mm -hmm. try to keep talking about it. So yeah, it was a it was a big boom because you know when I was with Marcus, the transformation that he went through, and you know all these wars between uh, bloggers. I call it I call them bloggers. They don't even journalists. Okay. 
I just started okay. talking pretty much twisting words and you have to understand when you are a US federal government witness or witness for any testing organization, they're not allowed to talk to you to talk about you to any press member ever. That's part of the mm -hmm. contract. So, you know, a lot of people they didn't know really who I was or what I done for for the um, for the best of the sport of the, for the drug testing because you know you said I was not talking about me because they cannot talk about me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's part of the witness program uh, uh, contract and a lot of organizations. Obviously, now I do talk. I come forward and I talk more about it because you know I am very because I was attacked so much <clears throat> from because of my past. You know, now I, I really go and, and I'm very vocal when it comes to drug testing. Drug testing, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a joke in boxing. It's, a, it's very weak, you know. It's, I mean, it's gotten better, but it's way, way far to be perfect. So I'm very critic to them, and they don't like that. See, but what oh. they don't understand, and, and they finally got to relax, is Memo, knows what he's talking about see back in the days they didn't know so they thought they could just come out to the media and and try to sell this drug testing to anybody in boxing when i know the flows i know every every aspect of drug testing i know it by heart do you understand so they don't yep. like to be corrected they don't like to be criticized but the fact is hey you don't even have to listen to me look at the ads look at the statistics how many people are are assigned to be drug tested 24 7 365 days a year with the WBC clean program. Ask me how many how many of those guys get tested. None. Do you understand? Uh. So I mean, I can go on and on. I mean, it's okay. <clears throat> we understand that in order for you to be ranked, you have to get registered yourself into the drug testing program. But the fact is, a lot of those athletes are registered. In, in, uh -huh. you know, a lot of my boxes are. I mean, Andy Ruiz was in the program. He was registered by Bada. He never got uh -huh. tested once. I mean. Oh. And, and, and so what's the, I mean, you know what I mean? What's the point, My right? Point is, <laughs> what I'm saying is, <laughs> if you're going to have them register, right, make sure yeah. you force the right number of testing. At least make it valuable, you know, when it comes to statistically. Make it valuable. Don't just test it once a year. Because, see, what, you, what the problem we're facing today is that, unfortunately, testing in the U.S. and maybe worldwide is, is very bad. I mean, in Mexico, it's, it's very bad drug testing. I don't know how it is in Philippines, but in the United States, you know, we have Bada. Before we uh -huh. had Usada, but they walk away and they they sign a uh, multi uh, multi year contract with you, with the UFC. Other uh -huh. than Bada, we only have uh, the commissions, the boxing commissions, and they they test very regular. They test even that they drug test you. They don't test for everything, so that leaves you that leaves you. Uh, kind of like wondering you know wondering a lot of things so i mean i can go over over and talk about this and i spoke to this many years i mean in many newspapers and they understand it but there's nothing we can do unfortunately commissions have their way to do the things and then we have bother they do their own thing so it's a mm -hmm. mess it's a mess unfortunately <laughs> there's people getting caught which is good you know people getting caught but there's a lot of people out there they're not getting tested and, ah, and, you know. So, what what uh, what is the the current reality right now in the situation uh, in, in performance enhancing drugs? How, how how would you assess the the current situation right now uh, in, in the boxing sport? Boxing on the well, in the, in boxing in boxing. It's it's uh it's gotten better. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's gotten better. I mean, Mauricio Suleiman is 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 trying to do his best he can. <coughs> Gilbertico for WBA W. See WBO eight, they're trying to do the best they can, but it's so co I mean it's so pricey to to enforce proper drug testing. I mean in order for for a fighter, say for example, if I want to fight a certain guy for the belt, right? Mm -hmm. Then if I want proper, if I want real real hard drug testing, then I have to pay for it out of my pocket, around oh. twelve thousand or twenty thousand dollars. So, so both fighters that we go into a contract, they'll sign a contract, and they'll get randomly tested in the period of time from the uh, from the training camps, which is, 
at that point it's it's much better as it's much better because you know you know you're getting random drug tested you're getting urine tests you're getting blood tests but you're paying for it you understand for example mm -hmm. when uh when casemiro signed for for Inoy fight you know they uh they signed for a contract for bada and casemiro got tested when we were in florida once and until today i have not received any answer if the mm -hmm. japanese got drug tested or not by contract uh -huh. <clears throat> when both fighters sign a contract both fighters got to get tested the same day there's no one day one you know there's no one day casimiro and then friday you know no it doesn't work like that you gotta be you gotta be tested the same day so no one has able to tell me obviously they're very quiet about it so there's situations like that that make you wonder or that makes you makes you kind of a uh, kind of wonder about the drug testing i mean it's gotten better don't get me wrong but like i said mm -hmm. in order for you for a fighter to ensure that you're gonna be fighting a fair fight you have to pay out of your pocket for, mm -hmm. for the right for the right testing uh program you know yeah you and do a week camp or 12 week camp then you have to pay for it and sometimes it's very pricey twenty five thousand dollars right so, rather rather than spend for that and you know get caught <laughs> that's a bigger problem but yeah i understand I, i'm i'm getting a lot of a big scoop here i want to ask you uh one uh, one comment says uh can you comment on uh canelo alvarez uh on yeah. the pad yeah but you know canelo alvarez was determined to be involuntary doping you know that was mm -hmm. involuntary he wasn't aware of the uh you know that contaminated the meat obviously he got sanctioned because you know the rule says that whatever you're responsible for whatever you ingest but uh after they did a lot of studies and you know i was one of the first one that that was actually very vocal on tv about it because it makes sure we have a big problem when it comes to clenbuterol unfortunately uh -huh. it's 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 a big crisis about contamination uh -huh. i mean it sounds like a joke a lot of people take it as a joke but uh, when uh, when Canelo tested positive, the amounts that they were present in the urine they were consistent with uh, clenbuterol contamination, with, you know, by me. So a lot of people were still doubting. You know, people were saying perhaps he did cycle off before they started camp. But you know, what people didn't know is that Canelo had, and and the whole organization and even the commission of Nevada, Las Vegas, they had uh, used his his hair sample for uh for you know for clenbuterol testing and okay. and like and it came out negative so there was no way that canelo had taken any clenbuterol before mm -hmm. camp you know it was basically what it what he was found in the urine was and based on the uh on the statistics based on the on the daily you know the daily investigation they did and the amounts in the urine it's, it's very consistent with uh contamination so but obviously you know I always, it was a very responsible for Canelo because I always tell, you know, when I was with Marcus and a lot of my fighters, I always tell him when we're in camp, even Casimiro knows, I tell him, mm -hmm. if you're going to eat red meat, please buy organic in the U.S., you know, oh. make sure that it's organic, okay. make sure it comes from, a, from, you know, he can tell you. And Marcus, I always prohibit him to eating red meat in Mexico and a lot of other athletes uh. Because that's the situation you don't want, you know, you don't want to go through the process. I mean, there's so many athletes in the past, they had to come out positive for that. Obviously, you have to understand also there's there's that the true possibility of you coming out positive by eating contaminated meat. And also there's the excuse that a lot of cheaters would use, you know, to mm -hmm. try to pull away from the situation. So, like I said, it comes down to uh, analyzing the samples, analyzing the concentrations and in this case for clenbuterol now the hair the hair testing is the most accurate that there is so you know wow wow very very concise answer thank you very much uh yes, can i also ask you about the uh, gerald miller it is the recent uh controversy well, with pet now it's 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 terrible i mean it's it's terrible i you know he tested three times before right my understanding is he tested three times and now he tested one more time yeah for uh w i think it was w i don't recall the substance but it tested positive okay. so mm -hmm. 
the only thing that could that could save him, the only thing that could save him, is if he can demonstrate with uh, you know with the supplements he was taking to send them analyze for for that particular substance. If they come out negative, then you know there's not much to say. I mean he's guilty as he can be. Unfortunately, uh, and 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 fortunately for others, that particular substance that he was found in Miller's recent testing is also found in a lot of supplements in the United States. Unfortunately, the oh. FDA has not, it doesn't have proper uh, guidance of uh, anybody can produce supplements. And, and unfortunately, not everybody follows the FDA rules. So there's plenty of supplements that are contaminated with that particular substance. That's what I, that's why I was telling you. If Miller turns in mm-hmm. all his supplements to the, uh, for example, in this case, I think it was BADA, and mm-hmm. he pays for the, uh, for the BADA, or they contract somebody else to reanalyze those supplements that he took. Could have been a protein, could have been creatine, could have been anything. If they come out negative from that particular substance, then, you know, there's, there's no other explanation. He's guilty as he can be. But there's still a possibility that could be supplementation cross-contamination but like I said he has to test his supplements if he doesn't test them obviously with with the last three samples he tested positive there's not much credibility on him you know even though and listen this is very important okay. even though today if he tests his supplements and they come up positive for the substance which means they were cross-contaminated mm-hmm. still people are not gonna believe him because his credibility you know, mm-hmm. was lost a long time ago. So, I mean, it, yeah. you know, let's, I, like I said, so far, mm-hmm. quiet about it. I haven't heard any statements from his lawyers or, or himself. So let's see what happens. But like I said, that's the only alternative he has, you know? Okay. That's the only, uh, only, only alternative he has is to try to prove that, you know, he's innocent. But like I said, yeah. it's very... Very tight, <laughs> very tight. <laughs> Maybe I'm really, really happy to, to have you here. You know, you answer very concise. I'm learning a lot. And, uh, you know, I appreciate, you know, the, you know, it's not a short answer. You know, some of the follow-up questions, you're already answering them. So thank you very much. But uh, I also want to say, you, you, you know, you've been an advocate now of clean sport and uh, practice and studied it. You have all you, those uh, diploma. W- what is your general advice? Uh, to those still athletes that are curious about using uh, these illegal su- supplements, uh, and well, have you, you know, still experienced this uh, type of uh, questions from athletes? You know, sometimes athletes ask me as a curiosity. You know, they want to be curious about my past, and they ask me, "Hey, was this athlete doing this? Was this athlete taking yeah. this?" And we take it as a joke. But uh, normally, when all my boxers that I work with, the first thing I tell them, "Don't ask me." about pets don't ask me to get you pets because the moment you do the moment you're out of the team you know don't get me involved in that and and normally the, all the guys that i have they don't obviously they don't take anything but unfortunately there's a lot of ignorance when it comes to boxing sometimes athletes take things without knowing that they're illegal you know for example mm-hmm. you can walk in into gnc store and, and buy yourself a, 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 a hormone supplementation that is mm-hmm. not illegal to sell in the U.S. without a prescription, but yet it'll give you a positive test. So oh. I always, I always, when I provide supplements for my athletes or my boxers, I always tell them, do not take anything other than what I'm giving you. You know, and you can ask Casimiro. Even Casimiro, he always shows me everything that uh, if any other coach gives him anything, he shows me, and I had to approve it first. Because when you buy supplements at a, at a GNC or any other store in the uh-huh. U.S., you got to make sure that you buy the brands that are certified, that are certified, uh-huh. that contain, that are certified, that has no cross-contaminations in it. That way you can avoid situations like, like you know, having false positives in the urine and then, you know, having been, uh, having been called guilty of doping. And, yeah. and obviously... Do, through the period of time when I was working with uh, for the uh, test organizations and you know I was giving a lot of uh, clinics I was giving a lot of uh, speeches to the kids you know that there's two ways athletes sometimes you know they want things so easy they want to go the easy way that's when they decide to cheat 
And I tell him, you know, you can do that, and you're going to definitely cheat. You might get better, but there's a wrong side about it. It's best to do it the long term with the new approaches that we have today. We have supplementations that we didn't have then. We have new methods that can mm -hmm. increase your hemoglobin without accessing to doping substances. I mean, there's so many ways, but you have to talk to the kids, you know, you have to talk to them, you have to let them know what's out there, you know, because a, a, a lot of the athletes don't know that, for example, certain vitamin or certain enzyme can help you to recover by, you know, by utilizing or by amplifying certain other substances in your body. You know, enzymes mm -hmm. create so many reactions in your body, and, 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 and normally they are very positive reactions. For example, you want, one of the, one of the, one of the things most important for me is trying to maintain your body uh, lacted as a free. It's never, it's, 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 it's never, I mean, it's impossible to maintain it free, but when you come into training and you train hard, even if you do sparring sessions, you want to minimize the percentage of uh, lactic acid levels in the blood. And, and there's a lot of ways to do it. And, you know, and you want to maintain uh -huh. it like that. I mean, and, and that, has a, that has a lot of good, uh, good uh, abilities for the body to recover and be able to train harder. So, like I said, I always try to explain in the best I can, but, you know, it's there's always here and there a couple guys, they ask to... Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know I mean? But normally they're just curious about all these reads. You have to understand, for them, I'm like an icon about in the past, you know, so they want to know all this about baseball <laughs> and, you know, Lance Armstrong and Marion Jones and all that <laughs> stuff, you know. So, you know, I, I'm always happy to... To tell him a little bit about, about the story that anecdotes mm -hmm. that we had in the past, but I tell him, don't bring me none of that stuff in unboxing because I'm not for that. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, is is there um is there a, a website or a list where we can find those those clean supplements? Because you said yes, you know, people you can, uh, we, people would buy. Them. Go ahead. Yeah, you could. For example, for those those boxers that are listening now, if you are in the U.S., try to go to the usada.org pagina page and they look into the supplementation uh they have a they have a, a link where they show you all the possibly supplementation supplements that are contaminated with cross contamination with with uh with pets so they pretty much show you a list of what you should avoid also bada has a list of supplements that could be possibly high risk you know so for example <clears throat> that's what that that is if you want to look online now if you want to go yeah. shop yourself you make sure you go into the store, and there's there's a few logos in the in in the um, in the bottom of the bottles that mm -hmm. says FDA complaint. They uh you know they they cert they, they there's different certifications that are legitimate. They go you know they they're pretty much ensuring you that this supplement is completely free of pets or any cross contamination. You know they go mm -hmm. through the process and they analyze their supplements before they put them in the market. To, you know, you can also request those uh, those uh, those analysis. You, you can go into, for example, if you like a certain uh -huh. into their website and request the uh, the batch number of the supplement and request the uh, the last analyze they did on them for for pets. So they all, everything should come out negative, but you at least have the report in your hand and the batch number. So I mean, it's very easy. Don't just I mean because a lot of people made the mistake they go online. And they're buying all these kind of supplements, but the problem is, who's really behind the supplements? Who made the supplements? Was it FDI approved? What I mean, FDI approved. I'm just gonna give an example. Normally, when you produce a supplement, you gotta filtrate it three or, or four times, or three times. Mm -hmm. So you gotta make sure you, you have to wash out the equipment correctly, plenty of times, and you gotta do this certain guidance that would enforce you, that they would you know, that they would. They will give you the guarantee of a clean product. But a lot of people that make products today in the U.S. and even in England, they don't have all these kind of laboratories. They're not even certified. Uh -huh. So you're putting yourself at risk because if they created, uh, for example, they makes a product that is perhaps banned by WADA, but they didn't wash it correctly. The blender is a big giant blender. They don't follow the steps for the, uh, but the FDA. Uh -huh. What happened is they mix something else, and guess what? You cross contaminate. Oh. And then you, instead of taking creatine, you're taking creatine with something else, and then that could trigger positive in the in any random test or any your you know your intestine. So I mean, it's, right. there's so many ways to 
to make sure that you do things right and, and, and protect yourself, you know, at any cost. Because like I said, legal supplementations, at least there's so many in the U.S. that they could be a danger. You know, they could give you positive. So you have to know what you're doing, you know. All right. I'm, I'm learning. Uh, uh, I'm learning a lot. Uh, I have to re-listen to this again. But uh, thank you very much for, for all of those. Uh, and thank you very much for talking to us about, uh, you know, those, you know, the things that should be done or not. Um, I, I want to switch it up a little bit. Uh, thank you very much for those information. Uh, of course, you work with Filipino athletes and boxers. Um, can, can you share? You you said you work with uh, Marvin Zuzona, Romero Duno, General Casimero. Any other Pinoy boxers that you work with? Uh, no, now I'll be working with so many soon. I'm waiting on the. Uh, everything is kind of slowed down because of the situation with the coronavirus. But the mm -hmm. the boxers they'll be coming coming to Las Vegas soon, and oh, I'll be part nice. of their conditioning program. So, okay. like I said, right now we uh, we focusing. I'm focusing my energy on Casemiro. Was a big fight, okay. and, and we hope to make history again. You know, nice, nice. I'm sure you're gonna get a lot more Filipino clients. Uh, I got a, a lot of viewers, Filipinos, and uh, and managers and promoters here. So they're gonna learn more about you. And uh, very, very knowledgeable guy. Definitely, um, definitely. Yes. Go ahead. You were gonna it. say something. Oh, okay. Uh, no, no, is there, I appreciate uh, it. I appreciate your words. <laughs> is there is there uh is there a common thing uh, so far from Filipino boxers that you've seen before starting training with you, like uh, in their strength and condition? Well, yes, a lot of them they they they, they don't like to sprint. <laughs> they don't like to sprint. <laughs> uh, they don't like to, uh, you know, uh, a lot of those exercises. Casimiro doing has to do with with conditioning adapted to the uh, to mm -hmm. the uh, biomechanics of his boxing movements. So you know when you design certain programs or certain exercises, you want to make sure you don't you don't you don't interfere with his biomechanics. So you know I have okay. him do a lot of medicine medicine ball drills with different mm -hmm. mobility angles. And then, like I said, the beginning, the first camp that we had a long time ago, that was like five years ago. He, you know, he didn't know much about it. He was adapting good. And now when we train for Tete, you know, he did pretty good. But, you know, they, they not used to doing the track mm. workout or sprinting. They used to more running long distance and doing the. Okay. Which is okay. You know, I do the mountain too, you know, once a week. I don't do it every day or, or three times a week. I just do it one time a week. And I normally, you know, emphasize on track workouts and I do the long distance, but differently, you know, I. I, I, I monitor his heart rates every time so I know whether the boxing is slacking off or whether he's pushing to the position, you know, to the, to the target time I want. For example, if I want Casemiro to be running at 155 pulses per minute, the only way for me to determine that or to be able to see is to be able to have monitor his heart rate. And, I, you know, I need a little apparatus uh -huh. that I have, a little watch, and I watch him. And, and he tells me, why don't, you know, he doesn't like running in a treadmill. Because, you know, a lot of boxers, they get bored of it, you know, because, you know, yeah. you, you're at the gym, you're at the treadmill, and you look at the same people instead of running around the trees and all that. But I explained to him, this is the only the only way I can I can make sure that he's running at a targeting point for condition. Because if I uh. send him to run long distance, I don't run with him, as you can see. I don't run with him. And then they get lost far away. Then I don't know if they're slacking off. So instead of be a conditioning race, Instead of be a conditioning train, raining, running, running, they'll be just burning calories. That's something we don't want. We don't want to burn calories. We want to burn calories, but we want to wow. also get conditioning benefits. And the only way I, to do that is, is like I said, targeting certain points that kind of sometimes they hurt. But hey, but like I said, Casimiro, it's best it's best to cry now than cry in the fight. You know. There you go. Hard I'm learning out. a lot. A lot of eye opener here for for me too. Uh, <laughs> a lot of eye open. <laughs> uh, 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 I want to ask. Uh, at one point, you know, you have been so popular as uh, strength and conditioning. Did you ever maybe had a chance to to work with with Manny at one point that I don't know? Did you work well, with him? I mean, I I no, I don't work with him. I work with his mm -hmm. fighters, mm -hmm. and obviously, I would love to work with Manny. But you know, Manny has a team. You know, yes. as a team, and I respect that. I'm not the kind of guy who try to jump in, and you know, I respect that. And like I said, I would love to to work with him before he retires, 
if that happens, it'll be perfect. If not, you know, it's okay. You know, I'm already okay. part of my Manny Pacquiao history. You know, I work with his fighters, so I'm happy with that. And and you know, like I said, who doesn't want to work with the best boxer ever in history? You know, that's Manny Pacquiao. It's legacy. And The only way you know a boxer is really popular is when you see an individual on the street that you don't uh -huh. know of, and then you ask him, do you know who Manny Pacquiao is? And they tell you yes, there you go. Now you know Manny Pacquiao is the boss because everybody knows him, even the regular people knows him. You know, he's the best there ever, you he's one of the best ever. You know, yeah. legacy at his best. All right, yeah, yeah. it's 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 because of him uh, mainly nowadays why a lot of Filipino boxers are getting a lot of opportunities. Anyway, uh, yeah. you, you design your own program. I, I, I've seen some of the interviews. How, how long do you formulate uh, it, what what do you look at the, uh, the boxers uh, when you see them? Let's say one boxer, hey, uh, you're training him. How, how, do, how long do you formulate those programs? I actually sit down with him first and then I ask him. And sometimes his coach <clears throat> comes with him. And, you know, I talk to both, you know. I ask him how was the last fight, what he felt mm -hmm. that he needed. Did he get tired? What rounds? You know, what kind of workout did he do? So kind of like do an interview, you know, just to have an idea of his background or what, what kind of work he did. And then I talk to his coach, you know, uh, co boxing coaches are very important because, you know, boxing with conditioning go together, you know. So you can have the best conditioning, but if you don't have boxing, then forget about it, you know. So you have to have a good boxing program with conditioning. and. And I always talk to the coaches because they, the, you know, I was asking, what is it that you, that you want on your guy? You know, mm -hmm. they tell me, well, you know, last fight they got tired. I want him to be more explosive. I, it seemed to me like he's slow now, blah, blah, blah. So mm -hmm. then I'll, you know, then I'll develop a program based on, 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 on what we need to change without affecting what we already have. For example, if the, fight, the fighter already has uh, good estamine, right? Uh -huh. You don't want to change that. You want to maintain that, but you want to add power and speed. So there's certain training methods that would increase your fast twitch muscles. It increases your explosiveness. And if you don't do it right, you become too explosive. But then guess what? You can gas out. See what I mean? Uh -huh. So it has to be careful. Yeah. It has to be carefully done, and and to the, to the point where you have satisfaction, a good percentage leverage. Meaning, for example. Uh, if I don't want to disable his system, you know, his endurance, then mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I work his endurance certain times a week. Uh, we do certain times of minutes or miles per week. And if I want to maintain, you know, his fast twitch muscles or explosiveness, then we want to work certain times a week, certain exercises. And then we have to know at exactly, at exactly period of time when you're going to cut him off because you have to mm -hmm. understand as the boxers get closer to the fight, you want to make sure that they pick right on the week fight. You don't want them to pick two weeks before because, you know, once they yeah. get to the fight, they already pick too early, and then you have a problem because then you, you're not going to see what you wanted to see. You're going to get a guy who's actually exhausted. It's not gonna, you're going you're gonna to see a guy completely different. So that's why uh, conditioning, uh, conditioning programming has to, has to be built precisely. That's why you do blocks, you know, you do conditioning blocks, you do a planification which you, mm -hmm. you know you count for example i use a lot of medicine balls right mm -hmm. I, I i usually you know i count how many medicine balls throws i do a week how many repetitions i do per week what kind of uh pounds do i use if i use 6 12 20 pounds and you know you got to count all that you got to count how many sprints you're going to do per week you know and the first phase of training one phase could have four weeks you know, second phase could have six weeks. So it's like I said, it depends uh, the time mm -hmm. you're given for the training camp. If you're only given eight weeks, then you got to go a uh, certain promo. If you're only given six weeks, then forget about mm -hmm. using certain things. Forget about doing weightlifting. Then you have to go straight mm -hmm. into into conditioning and, you know, and maintenance. I mean, it's 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 not complicated. I mean, but I mean, I've been in this so many years is it's by experience. But like I said, just for you to have an idea. You know, like, for okay. example, heavyweights, heavyweights are Andy Reese is it's very fast handed, extremely mm -hmm. fast, explosive. Mm -hmm. But he used to get, you know, used to get very, very easy fatigue. When I work with him with the two fights, you know, he, he did pretty good. 
And yeah, yeah. But see, heavyweights don't like to sprint. You know, the heavy they don't <laughs> like to sprint. But Andy pushed himself. You know, a lot. Of, you know, lately Andy has been criticized a lot because of what uh -huh. happened. But you know, when I worked with him, he did pretty good. He was he was always training hard, pushing himself. Maybe perhaps all that fame and all that money all of a sudden mm -hmm. maybe created a little bit of conflict. But but like uh -huh. I said. Every boxer also deals with a personality. Every boxer has a different personality. Sometimes you have to deal with. You know, we all. He, I have a personality myself, but you know, sometimes I have to uh -huh. be the personality that boxer wants me to be. You know, one thing I'm not ever. I'm not a babysitter. I tell him right in her face. I'm not your babysitter. I'm not your mama's boy. You know, I'm your friend. You want to talk to me? You can talk to me. I'm not gonna say, oh man, you know, I'm tired. Okay, relax. No, no, no. If you're tired and you're telling me you're tired, I'm going to check your pulses in the morning. If those pulses reach the number that I think they should be reaching, then I know you're tired. But if those pulses are not what, what you know, the pulses that I, that I was, you know, then you're just faking it. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's, there's a science for everything. You know, usually yeah. when you're tired, when the body or when the boxer trains too hard, the next day, you know, because the lactic acid, it, it wasn't able to, you know, to, to clear it out quickly from the body. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the heart gets a little bit tired and, and so the pulses go higher in the morning. That's when you'll be able to tell if the box is really tired or not. I mean, it's, you know, blood <laughs> pressure, percentage of oxygen, you know, I mean, you name it. But these guys don't know, I know. So sometimes I know they just don't want to train, <laughs> you know. So, you, you can't fool the, the master. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, the experience, you can't fool them, you know. And, and they think, they think I... You know, I sometimes I'm hard, but sometimes I'm also human, and I understand sometimes their mind. It's like uh -huh. with Casimiro. We were training in Miami for five weeks, then the fight collapsed because of coronavirus. So then he was training uh -huh. in Las Vegas. So you know, we had to stop uh -huh. because you know he was getting tired mentally, and that happens okay. because when you don't have a date, your body and your head is not not in the right place. So I I uh -huh. told Casimiro, you know, let's start when when we get a date. That way we uh. We know where we're going, and I can start the program. So you know, now he's he's refreshed and he's ready to start tomorrow. But you know, okay. like I said, some boxers you have to know them a little bit. You know, you have to understand them. You know what they go oh. through. Sometimes sparring is too hard, mm -hmm. and and sometimes they don't tell you the real story. Sometimes they go they go to, they go to their house, but they stay up three in the morning watching TV or whatever they're doing. And they don't get up in the morning and you ask him, well, where are you? Oh, I was so tired. But then you see the Instagram and you see them out there at two in the morning chilling, you know, taking pictures and stuff. I mean, you know what I mean? So then, you know, think situations like that. You just got to know how to handle it. And and like I said, you know, talking to them and try to make them understand that sometimes it's, it's good to rest and sometimes it's not good mm -hmm. to rest, you know? Okay. All right. Well, well. Thank you very much again for a very well uh, <laughs> explained answer. Uh, do Do you just focus on boxing now, or do you do other sports as well for as a strength and conditioning coach? Well, right now, box. You know, basically boxing. I do advise mm -hmm. sometimes uh, sprintings, a couple sprints, a couple other sports. You know, but basically boxing now because, you know, the other sports like soccer or 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 any other sports. They Did you coach Usain Bolt? Own... Sorry, Usain Bolt? Did you? No, what I was saying is, him? listen, what no. what I was saying, what uh, that when you work with different, um, for example, soccer, mm. it's too long. Mm -hmm. The season is too long, and usually the clubs have their own their own strength conditioner. So sometimes what I do, I I train uh, individuals. And I, I train them uh, pre, uh, pre, pre, I call it pre-season before they. Okay. Uh, memo? I think I lost here. <laughs> We're having so much fun talking to Memo right now. Uh, I, I think I, I lost his audio. Uh, Mabel, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, hello. Uh, I may have lost the uh, memo here. Yeah, yeah. Back, back yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm getting a lot of calls from, uh, from, actually, from one of my clients right now, from Rancis. 
They just call I'm me. so sorry. So, we, we, you, well, we've, yeah. it's, we've taken longer than schedule. We're on the last part. Uh, but no I just problem. couldn't stop you from explaining because, uh, you know, it, it's so complete that I, you know, it's, uh, I'll take it. So, yeah, go ahead. No, like I said, uh, you know, I do some clients, private clients, but usually they, they baseball players. I help them in the preseason only. Okay. Or, you know, All right. but, but it's, it's, it's different. You know, boxing is, it's, it's shorter, you know, you got five or five bases, but you know, the other sports uh -huh. is too long. So I'm trying to focus now on boxing only. Okay. All right. Uh, we're on the last part and I can't end this show without asking you about, uh, of course, Casimero, uh, Casimero, you said start camps tomorrow. Uh, you know, what would you work with him uh, if you can share anything uh, uh, in particular? Yeah, with him, we'll start, uh, we'll start working two weeks of uh, general endurance. Get his, uh, he's in a good shape point right now. It's not like he's starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. So we'll start two weeks where his body, uh, I want to get him into uh, what uh, I call it uh, uh, general endurance, you know, trying to have a lot of long distance. Try to have long sprints, you know, mm -hmm. pretty much uh, muscle resistance, you know, uh, muscular endurance. Mm -hmm. Then we'll start working on, on, on his power, basically on a, a lot of agility to keep his up. Uh, because he's an explosive fighter. So I want to make sure that he's more explosive and is stronger than he was with Tete. But I want to make wow. sure that he has good endurance to be able to sustain 12 rounds in case that whoever he fights soon, he has everything in place, you know. So with Casimiro, okay. since already this will be my, my third time with him, so I know I know what he lacks. I know what what uh, what I can change mm -hmm. on him. But like I said, he you know he's a hard punching power from right to left. So nice. I want to increase that even more punching power. So so okay. you know every time he hits opponent, you know he's developing. You know he's giving him custom power you know what i mean but also he moves a lot he has a lot of mobility so we'll work at different angles you know mobility speed endurance and power hopefully in the fights is in september at the end or october i don't know we don't know the date i think could be those dates then i got more time to to elaborate a, a more complete program you know and hopefully yeah when you know it comes then we'll be more prepared for for a bigger fight Okay, yeah, I just really have to ask. But I, I did saw Casemiro posted a uh, comment that it might be September. Um, yeah. It, is there, can you share a name already? Is it Inoue? Is it Rashi Warren? Is it Maloney? I, I don't know I if don't it's know. That, that, something you can say. <laughs> that, that you have to talk to Sean and, and to, uh, <laughs> to Casemiro. I never get involved with that because then I get in trouble. So I don't know. Really. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Uh, Okay. I, well, um, is it true though? Uh, just to follow up from you know from the, the power you said from the left and the right hand. Uh, there were some articles about uh, Juan Manuel Marquez uh, and then Casimiro comparison uh, with the punching power. Does that yes, did that uh, come from you? The, re uh, mm -hmm. the reporter was asking me if if, if uh, you know Casimiro, his power mm -hmm. could be increased like Marquez. So yes, when you work in a boxer, a lot of there's a lot of misunder misperception about a lot of trainers even today they'll tell you oh you cannot increase punching power but that's completely mm -hmm. wrong you can increase okay. punching power just punching power can be increased when it's when you train correctly when you train for it and casimiro has a natural a natural gift he's already a punching power because he utilizes his body pretty well his ball mechanics are, are very strong. He uses his legs, he uses his torque, everything. But imagine nice. if I can be able to increase more snappiness into it, more explosive speed, then, then nice. obviously you're going to have a more, even if you only increase 20% more punching power than to that, that's that's a big difference already. So yes, okay. uh, the question that was, the answer I was telling the reporter was, yes, uh, Casimiro, yes, definitely we can increase his power just like Marcus. You know, it'll take, it'll take <laughs> uh, after this fight, and once we get the big fight, hopefully, you know, it, then we do a long camp, and I'll start working and a lot of more weightlifting with him. You know, I haven't got into the into the program yet with him. I'm gonna start with him now, doing mm -hmm. certain exercises of weightlifting, not everything, just certain exercises, until I'm mm -hmm. able to see his, uh, you know, his ball mechanics, if if he can adapt, you know, if he can do them or not. Because sometimes you want a, a guy. 
it says if you send your boxer to do certain exercise, but if he mm -hmm. cannot do it, you cannot force it because instead of helping himself, he's going to hurt himself, you know? So you have to find a, find what he can do and things that you can compensate with other exercises that will give you the same benefits. Nice. Thank you. you know, Thank so you for that answer. We, we, end, oh, up, we end the second. So in other words, we're in the second, <laughs> second mm. stage now. So the third stage now will hopefully, after this fight, we'll be stronger and stronger. So we'll be ready. All right. Casimir is uh, already uh, 30 years old. Uh, uh, from, based on your assessment, how long can we still see uh, a prime, the prime years of Casimiro? Well, I mean, look at this. You have Senator Pacquiao, 40 years old, still fighting. Nicely, okay. Like a youngster. Nice. Then you got Marcus retired at 41, I think. So, yes, I mean, as long as the boxer has no, has no brain injuries and he's taking care of his body, and he's not going in through these crazy dehydrations <laughs> to make weight because that's a lot of uh -huh. that's that's a lot of the problems that hurts the boxers in the future you know in uh -huh. the long term is when they go through these these crazy diets and dehydrate to make weight and, and they don't properly rehydrate and there's a lot of injuries and, and and that could happen in the brain so as long as casimiro take care of his body and 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 he'll be all right i would say you know i mean probably 10 years but you know, wow. I don't know if Casimiro wants to fight ten more years, but I think, I think probably good five years, six years he'll make, he'll be out there, you know. Well, I think uh, it's it's uh, it's okay to assume that as long as he's working with uh, Memo Heredia, he can uh, fight go. until ten years. <laughs> <laughs> like one of my guests. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's yeah. it, my friend. Okay. Uh, uh, just yeah. last one, and then you can you can say thank you because I've already uh, eat up uh, one hour and thirty six minutes and counting of your time. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> so I don't know how much would that cost me if that's a uh, conditioning uh, time. But uh, who, who would you consider right now as the top boxing prospect? And well, I mean, in any you mean in any world division. Yeah, just you know, just name a few. Who who is the boxer that we should look at? That was gonna be a, a star soon or a, a great boxer. I mean, you got a. Uh, I mean, so many. I I don't even can tell. You. I mean, there's <laughs> there's a uh, Navarrete, Mexican guy. There's a, a, a mm -hmm. couple Filipinos are good. You know, you got Casimiro coming up. Mm -hmm. You got Inoue. You got the, mm -hmm. the new generation because you know all this older generation are leaving soon. So you got all these prospects. You have uh, David Hain, you got uh -huh. Rolly, it's a Cuban guy. You have a uh, Tank. I mean, you got so yeah. many prospects. You got Felix Verde who's coming up. I mean, there's so many of them. It's, it's wow. hard to, to, to really pick one, but there's a lot of young guys who are coming up and they 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 have made adjustments in their trainings. They have made adjustments in, in uh, some of them, they have changed coaches and seems like they have done uh, some good in them. So. We'll see what happens in the next, you know, in the next years. But I think there's plenty of young people out there, you know. All right. Plenty of good guys. Plenty of clients too, and uh, plenty of uh, to look forward in boxing. Thank you very much, Memo. And uh, thank you, man. Uh, well, you know, I, I, I think, I think I told you that this is not gonna last for uh, for an hour, but it lasted uh, more than half, uh, one and a half hours. Uh, any mm -hmm. last words or any message or any greetings no or problem. whatever you wanna advertise. Please do so. No, man. Just, just want to say thanks for, for you know, all the Filipinos for their support, and and I'm very grateful. And like I said, you know, follow up our fighters. We have good fighters coming up. Follow up Casimiro on his on his dream, and these other young Filipinos are coming up strong. So thank you very much for your support. Thanks for inviting me to show, man. All right, anytime, anytime. It's such a pleasure and an honor to have you, Memo Heredia. Again, thank you very much to all of the listeners. Thank you and good night to you. I know it's, uh, what, what time is it there? Nine o'clock? Yeah, nine. <laughs> Going to sleep <laughs> now. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll let you All sleep right, and uh, uh, have a nice day or have a, a nice sleep. Appreciate it, buddy. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye, Bye. Oh, wow. Wow. That was a long conversation I had uh, with uh, Memo. And uh, I truly appreciate that. And I just want to thank everyone who uh, actually... Uh, who lasted from uh, an hour and a half ago, who was here from the start uh, until now. Well, thank you very much, guys. And uh, uh, as you know, um, we're, we're interviewing international boxing uh, uh, profiles now. So, 
Thank you very much for Memo and good luck to Jan Rica Samero. Good luck to all of them. Um, tonight, I will have uh, another uh, conversation with the uh, Filipino boxer, Miel Fajardo. Uh, we interview from the popular guy uh, to, you know, up and comer here in the Philippines. So, bakit ba ako nag English pa rin? Pwede na ako magtagalog. At uh, magpapaalam na ako sa inyo. Salamat po sa inyo lahat. Pakishare na lang po kung may natutunan kayo, kung nag-enjoy kayo at, uh, at kung uh, supporter kayo ng podcast. Salamat and uh, papakita ko lang yung mga last comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sabi ko sa inyo, marami kayong matututunan dito eh. Pow salute, Pow Cast Sports. Here comes the boom, boom, Pow. And I am out of here. Sandali, magpapaya. Ano mo, naka-outro. Pow Cast Sports. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.